Hi Hannah. Uh, this is the 69 uh, advanced, so it basically means that the, the film back is removable. Uh, just a very short video to show you how to use it. The lens on here is the 150mm uh, 5.6 lens. Uh, so like all large format lenses, the aperture and shutter speed is set on the shutter itself here. So to set the aperture, let me just turn it around. You can see on the, on the top here, you've got an aperture scale that runs from f5.6 on the right up to f45 on the left. So large format lenses go uh, very small aperture. As I said before, you would set it to 5.6, so the widest aperture to, um, to focus. Um, shutter speed is the silver ring on the front. So again, you can see here, it goes right the way from timed, which is basically if you hold the um, shutter down or the cable release down, it will stay open until you let it go. Uh, sorry, it will stay open um, until you press it again. Bulb, it stays open while you hold it down. And then you've got um, one second, half a second, quarter, eighth, fifteenth of a second. This shutter goes up to five hundredth of a second. All large format lenses, um, the shutters are slightly different. Uh, but generally they'll all go up to sort of 250, 500 of a second. That's sort of normally the fastest speed. Uh, focusing is done with this helicoid. So like a, a traditional SLR camera. So you would focus um, the, the white line here. I've already cut to show infinity. So that is um, focused to infinity. So the, the far distance. And then as you turn the helicoid left, it brings the focus more closely. I haven't checked the closest, but it's, I think it's probably about, um, about 12 inches, something like that, maybe a bit less. Um, so the back of the camera, oh, sorry, we'll look at the top first. You've got a bubble level in the top. So you can see that, you can see that when the film back is inserted and when the ground glass is fitted. So you can um, make sure it's level if you need to all the time. Obviously that, that moves about as I'm moving the camera. There's a single cold tube if you wanted to put a, a light meter um, range find or anything like that. You've also then got um, just two winding knobs, like most uh, medium format cameras. These can go left or right. So with medium format film, I'll show you in a moment, you load it. You would load the, the new film roll on the left and an empty spool on the right. And then you just turn the knob counterclockwise, which winds on the film. Um, you just keep winding right to the end with medium format film. You don't rewind it like with 35 millimeter. It's uh, it's wound fully onto the, the the blank roll if you like. Also on the back we've got a, a film reminder slot, so you can uh, rip the the part of the box off if you want to put that in, so you know what film you've got loaded. And we've also got the the film uh, the frame number window. So if you turn that to the right, there's a it's a red window there. So when we load film, I'll show you. Um, the backing paper, I'm not sure they've used medium format film before, but the backing paper has numbers printed on it. So for six by nine frames, you would take every other number. So you'd start with frame number one, and then you'd wind it onto frame number three, five, seven, nine, um, uh, 11, sorry. So you get eight frames out of a, a six by nine format camera. Uh, with 645, you would use every number so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. But this one just has six by nine. I haven't, I haven't got a six, four, five dark slide with it at the moment. Um, on the the rest of it, you've got a cable release. So this cable release that I've got on here has got a, a locking knob here. So if you turn it to the right, so you can see that that's pressed right down. That lets you obviously just take a shot. It, it doesn't stay locked. If you turn to the left the cable release stays down until you press it to release it. So that's if you want to do a long exposure, if you didn't want to so just hold it down. Um, to actually um, take a shot, which I'll show you in a moment, you have to cock the shutter first. So the sh a large format shutter has got springs inside it that um, runs the shutter, if you like. So the way you would do this is uh, if you set the shutter speed you want, so you would meter for the scene, whether that was say uh, two fifth, one two fiftieth. So we've got the red line there against two fifty. And then if we look, it's actually underneath here. There's this this silver knob. You just push it. As I'm looking from the front here, I'm pushing it to the right. Um, it will only go one way. 
until you get to the end and then you can let it go and that's now loose so you know it's cocked so when you want to take the picture you would just press either press that down or you can actually press that on the, the lens as well but if you press that um sorry i've got the, I've got the shutter open that takes the picture so again if you just cock that take the picture the reason why that wouldn't fire then is what this shutter has and, and lots of shutters have is a, a preview lever so i'm not sure you can, you can really see in that but the blades are closed there at the moment the shutter blades but if i press this lever down the shutter opens so you can see the blades move so that this, this is how you would um focus so what you what you would do which i'll show you now on this camera is you would remove the film back and fit the ground glass in place open the shutter and you'll see the image on the ground glass then so i'll i'll, I'll show you that now it's, it's quite hard to do it with one hand it's easier with two hands to lift the back but basically that the film back itself is just secured with magnets so we've got two strong ones on the bottom and uh, three on the top so what you do is you literally lift it up that's why there's grips on the back you can put your thumbs on that and it'll lift and the whole thing the whole film back removes so that's a standalone six by nine back the dark slide is in place you just pull that up to remove it um so what you can do that is now um sorry that's now you put that to one side so I'm, i, I want to focus my scene compose the scene and what you have in, instead which is with it is this ground glass i've just got a little velvet pouch here just protects it so I'll take that out so here's your ground glass so this is the the sort of the back side if you like so this is the smooth side with glass and on the underside that's a helic that's the um fresnel lens there you can see the the circle so that basically makes an image brighter it it, it focuses the light into the center of the the ground glass and to fit this all you do is you put it on the back and drop it down and it slots into place so there's a lock on the top and there's a lock on the bottom it's not locked in the sense if you tip the camera over it won't come off you, you just lift it off again to take it off so you just drop it into place we now got glass at the moment there's no image shown on the glass because we haven't opened the shutter so as i say if you use the the preview lever press that down we've now got an image on the ground glass as i said before i set the aperture on the use the silver dial to the widest aperture to the lowest number so in this case 5.6 so it just gives you more light you can set it down but your image will be darker um so if you look on the back now there's our, our frame as, as we turn this the focus will change i'm not sure you know to tell there but we basically go from infinity to close focus so we can see actually on the umbrella there to the left and focusing past it and then bringing it into focus so essentially you use the ground glass to, to line up your composition and to get the focus you prefer. So you can put your hand over it or put a cloth over it, a t-shirt, jumper, anything like that, if you need to, just to make it a little bit brighter. I mean, I'm just standing inside a, a summer house at the moment. So, you know, this is, it, it, it's fine. You can use, um, if you don't have a, a, a focusing loop, which you probably won't if you don't do large format, you can take any, any other camera lens uh, if you flip it round, sort of reverse it and look through the rear elements, that works as a magnifying glass, basically. So you can put that right up against the glass and you'll see um, much more detail. You can focus more clearly then. Okay, so once you're happy um, with your, your, your composition, with your focus, you know, you can you can tweak it to wherever you want. So, okay, let's, let's get that umbrella in focus there. And the door keeps closing which doesn't help um before you um fit your film back on and take the dark side out what you need to remember is to close the shutter again because if you don't close the shutter as soon as you remove the dark slide on your film back it will um expose the film to light uh, and then you're gonna have a knackered shot so always remember to close the shutter first so that's closed and we now can't see anything on the ground glass you can just see me <laughs> um so that's something that everyone who shoots large format forgets at some point i'm going to move across i'm just film through the door um 
it, it will happen. <laughs> there's no, there's no denying it. You'll, it, it, it's people often forget it. You do it once, then you remember it next time. So, okay, shutters closed. There's no image on the on the ground glass, so we know we're focused. How you want to be, you, you've got your subject in focus. What you can then do is you remove the ground glass, take that down, and then you would take your film back again. I'll show you loading film in a moment, but basically all you do is you just drop it into place. It locks in with the magnets again. Uh, and when you're ready to take your picture, all you then do, you go back to your shutter. So you've metered your scene. So you've used a light meter or, you know, Sunny 16, depending on what you, you're doing. And you set the aperture to whatever the, the meter suggests. So maybe it's, I don't know, F11, 60th of a second. Random. You know, that's that we do. And then we're going to cock the shutter using the trigger, the, the little trigger on the bottom again. So the shutter is now cocked. It's ready to take your picture. So all you're going to do now is you pull the dark slide out. So now inside this film back, the film is ready to be exposed. It's open to the to the, the frame. And then you can just push the trigger. And that's, you've taken your picture. That's all you need to do. Uh, it's good to have it just to put your dark slide back in. Drop that back in um, and then open your window, wind your film onto the next shot, which will be um, two numbers on. So if that was frame number one, I would wind on to frame number three. Close your window again. The red, the red uh, acrylic inside here um, stops some of the light getting through. Film is red sensitive. But uh, certainly if you're outside um, at all, or you've got bright light shining on the back of the camera, I'd always suggest closing the, the window again once you've wound on. It just stops the risk of um, sometimes if you don't, you'll see like a, a white circle because it's light getting through the film back in the, the paper back in. Um, <clears throat> so just close it off. Um, right, I'll show you how to, to actually. So you've basically taken a picture there. That's that's your image exposed. That's on your film. I always wind on after taking a picture. It just saves any situation where you maybe forget. I've done that myself again if I haven't wound on. You go to take another picture and you end up with a double exposure. So it's good practice just to wind on between frames as soon as you've taken the shot and it's ready on your next frame. Okay, I probably should have done this one first, but um, to load a film, uh, it's pretty straightforward. The rear door uh, is hinged on the left, so it's secured on the right with magnets. I've already popped this open just because I've only got one handle on film in this, but you just use a thumb. In, in this this recess and just push it open with your thumb um, so it'll hinge open so what you've got these knobs are spring loaded so to load to load a film you would take um, your your film this is a, a test roll that I've got I'm not gonna be able to see this one handed but basically uh, if you you'd see I don't know if I can see in there there's um, there's a little spindle that moves when you pull the knob up. So literally you would just pull this up and put your film in, drop it back down. You'll know it's in place because when you it, it goes back down to the same position and as you turn, the film will turn. I'll do that. Just, I'm just gonna put the camera down while I do that. Okay, so you've got, this is your new film. So this is where you've um, loaded it in on the left. And on the right, you've got an empty spool. Basically this spool is what's inside the film here. And all you do is you take take this this little tab and you pass it through the slot. Again, it's going to be quite hard for me to do this one-handed, but I'll try. Um, and all you do, you just keep it a pressure with your thumb as you wind on. No, <laughs> that ain't going to work. Um, you need two hands for that. So if you put put feed the film through the slot, I just keep keep your finger on there as you turn this with your other hand as it starts winding on, just until you get it um, a little bit of friction. So it's tight on. I'll just do that and then I'll come back. Right, so you can see here, I've, I've wound that on. Once you turn sort of once, maybe twice at most, uh, it starts gripping. So it'll it'll turn with no problem then. Now what you want to do really, once it's loaded like that, don't wind on at the moment because you've got um, a run of just backing paper before the film sort of starts in here. So at this point, if you shut the door, once you know it, it's, it's winding on, it just shuts closed. It's uh, it's magnetic, so it, that that's closed now. 
Um, and then, if I don't know where you're going to see this, if you open the, the window here, those black lines you can see there on the backing paper. So as you wind, you're going to wind it on. Again, it's easier to see in person than here. Um, you're going to wind it on until you see number one. So as you're getting close, every film's different. Kodak film is a bit lighter, the grey, just the print that they use. So sometimes it can be a bit difficult to see the numbers. That's that's across the board on all cameras. It's just a bit of a Kodak thing. So the arrows tell them the numbers coming up now. So you just go slowly. So again, we've got a couple of lines coming. So as you're coming up here, it says Kodak, and that's number one. It's this is a test roll of that. That's why there's another line there, but that that's the number one there on the right of those two lines uh, in the Kodak film. Ilford looks slightly different, but it'll still the numbers are in the same positions. They just print with a different font, and to be fair, Ilford uh, is darker. So that that's frame one now. So you close that, and you then go take your shot as we said, as I showed you, expose your frame. And uh, once you've done that, you open this again, and then you'd wind it on. So in this time, so there's number two, we're, we're going to skip that one, because six by nine is every other number. So then you're going to keep going until we see number three. So that's our next frame. So say you're going to go one, three, five, seven, nine, eleven, um, thirteen, fifteen. 15. So you will get eight shots off a roll on six by nine. Um, and yeah, I think that's it really. I've, I've just got the one cone. I haven't got another lens with the camera. So you've, you've just got the 150. So the, the main things to remember is um, opening the shutter is this switch here. So you know it's open because you can see right through the lens here and there's an image on the ground glass. Um, if you can see an image on the ground glass, don't put your film back in until you've closed this shutter down. So again, you know it's closed because the blades close over here. Um, other than that, I think that's probably everything. Um, obviously, you can fit a normal tripod on the bottom. There's a tripod um, mount thread on the base. Um, yeah, I think that's it. Obviously, any questions or any issues you've got, just give me a shout. Cheers.